Welcome to Neon Speaks. I'm Neon, your host, and we're actually at the Palms Hotel in Las Vegas, which is amazing. Um, we've obviously got an incredible movie we're going to see after this interview, and after we do the red card, we've got a lot of things going on um, to see The Sound of Freedom. The Sound of Freedom is a very controversial movie, um, but it's done extremely well. And this particular movie, which probably a lot of you don't understand, was turned down by so many people. And the gentleman next to me, Paul Hutchinson, actually is um, the executive producer and also the founder of all the financial status in this movie. <laughs> because everybody turned everything down and, and it couldn't, the movie could not come out, apparently, I'm doing this all on her, say, apparently for five years. That's correct. We finished it over five years ago. Over five years ago, you finished the movie. It's taken all this time up until, what was it, six months ago, roughly, now that it came yet. out? July 4th. So oh, it's not July, even July 4th. August, it was a sparkle September, day. Yeah, July, August, September. We're about three Just months. Just three months. Now, Paul, Paul's my guest, by the way. Isn't he amazing looking? <laughs> Lovely guy. Do you know, I've got to tell, before, Thanks, we go into, before we go into everything else, he was just telling me a story. You stole... <laughs> say this because it's amusing you <laughs> stole your wife from a very well known i did actor i did I, this, what, this is my favorite that, story and he loves this story so i want him to tell She's, me the story paul so so i so i met my wife in haiti i was doing some in undercover haiti. rescue work that's a beautiful place to meet your spouse not really and uh, she was donating her time in the orphanage in haiti oh, and I, I tell i tell people meeting a meeting a beautiful colombian actress is kind of cool but when she's donating her time at an orphanage in Haiti, that's amazing. That's really cool. That's really cool. Now, the backstory is even better. So There we go. There we go. <laughs> so, so Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill, he's, he's the actor who plays Superman, right? Yes. Chiseled. He's all, just, yeah, he's yeah, got the muscles, yeah, yeah. he's got I, I the looks, he's got I don't the have, eyes. I don't have that, right. But Yeah, but you have other things. <laughs> exactly. <obviously. laughs> so so Hen Henry, Henry was at, at her work. This is years ago. Yes. She was at her, he was at her work almost every day. They went on a few dates. Now they weren't like big, hey, we're dating. They went on no. they went on a few dates. They were kind of attached. Yeah. And then she met me. I stole she... Superman's girlfriend. What? That that's is just my best be. story. I that's mean, my that's, mic that's got to be your on your A list. Yeah. That's definitely <laughs> the A list. And actually I just met her and she came up and said, Hello, how are you? And I looked at this beautiful woman. I said, Well, I said, Who are you? Because <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> and you turned around and said, That's my wife. Beautiful yeah. woman, but yeah. I think um, not only in looks, but I think in heart. Oh, for of what sure. She, for what she was doing, I, I think that's... So much compassion. She runs now the, the foundation, the Child Liberation Foundation. She's the executive the director. The Child Liberation Foundation. Mm -hmm. I like the liberation part of it because I was saying to you, I had a show called Voices of Tomorrow. I had it for 16 years. Mm -hmm. I won a tremendous amount of awards for this show. Everybody loved it. It went very, very well. And I gave the, the younger generation a platform to speak out and to be part of the world. Because mm. just because they're young doesn't mean to say they're not people. I mean, they're still people. Exactly. These are people. So now what you're doing with this, this, this child you know, thing that's going on is absolutely awful. And then I heard that nobody would pick the movie up for five years. And that absolutely, I, I was stunned by that because I think, I don't really want to mention any of the names because that wouldn't be fair. So I won't do that. I could. But I won't. <laughs> but um, so, what made you turn around and, and, and pick up this movie about trafficking? It, this is child trafficking, and you know, freedom. So, so here's the history. I, I actually the the story starts about ten years ago. Now, I've been an investor for many years. I'm the yes. founder of a, of a large real estate investment fund, and and uh, I had always heard that the. The, the probability of making money investing in a movie is about like going here to Vegas and throwing it in the slot machines, yes. right? It's not, it's, not, it's not something where you can calculate all of these but things. But I'm going to win this and this and this and this. <laughs> exactly. It's probably probably going to lose this, this and this. Exactly. So the only reason why I invested in this film was for the purpose of creating a movement. A movement. Back at the time of Abraham Lincoln, it wasn't the guys rescuing the slaves that created the biggest difference. It was people like Harriet Beecher Stowe who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. Yes. It was the media, that was the movies of the age. And was you this. called that kind of a movement. That's right, this was a movement. Because people were moving. Exactly. That's what a movement is, it moves. Well, and, and what happened back then 
is so many good people were reading her book that had no idea what was happening behind in the scenes. Exactly. And so once wow. they read that, they're like, no, we're going to. In fact, years later, Abraham Lincoln, when he first met Harriet Beecher Stowe, he shook her hand. She was a little lady. She wasn't that tall, under five yeah. feet tall. He shook her hand. He said, so you're the little lady that wrote the book that started the big war, right? So that movement that happened from that right book there. started the big war. So and she what, probably didn't write it for that. She didn't, but she did want to, she did want to create awareness. Yes. She wanted to create awareness yeah. to make a change somehow to make a change. Even in those days. Absolutely. And so from those days, we're now over to these days and we're still trying to do the same thing to make a change and nobody wants a change. <laughs> oh, they kind of do. They're just looking for direction and, and look what okay. you've done all these years with with your videos with your podcasts with the interviews of the children you, you did it to make a change yes i did you yes, did that was I the did. purpose of it and i did it because i left home when i was 16 with five bucks yeah i didn't go to school i had no education i had absolutely zero of anything i didn't have i've never had a mentor i never had anything and i i and i ended up in bel-air with the most beautiful home and the most beautiful husband. And we actually, we, he wasn't, he had no money when I met him. I didn't have very much. And then we, we made this big change and everything else. And that's when I started Voices of Tomorrow uh -huh. because I succeeded from where I was and I could teach all and help all these children like you're doing the same thing, helping all these children that have no guidance or they have guidance, but still wander off, whatever they do, you know. But you're doing a greater impact right now because trafficking is one of the biggest things in this world, it's right? It's getting, and is it getting bigger? It is getting bigger, and that's, that's what's so sad. It's, a, it's the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world, and good people don't even know that it's happening. No, they don't. There's now, I know Epstein, and I probably shouldn't bring this up, but I'm going to. Epstein, you know, he did what he did, and his, his girlfriend, whatever, they did what they did. That was kind of part of it, too. Oh, but for that sure. was part of it, part of it in a very small for way sure. that's going on in the world. So and people were against that. So why can't we get more people involved? Because I know it's like a very like I just did an interview and it's put on the sort of I don't know judgment side of of YouTube. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it, not all people can will watch it. You know. Mm -hmm. well, so what is the problem between people? and this trafficking are not wanting to take care of it or to actually understand what's going on with our children. Okay, 18 over, fine. It, it's because it's such a dark subject. You know, before the movie came out uh, yeah. two years ago, it, it really wasn't polite conversation to talk about trafficking at a dinner table. Right, you couldn't do it, it was very difficult. Now that the movie's no, I, come out, now we can say, okay, now let's talk about this. Now I know why so many people wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now I'm understanding the whole reason. <laughs> because because they, they want to pretend like it doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist. But, but unfortunately, many of them know that it does. Well, they're part of it. Well, they're part of it, and they have experienced horrible things as a child themselves, themselves. in their own homes. And it's, it's hard, it's a, it, it cuts deep, it's a difficult conversation because it brings up things that they have buried. Literally one See, out of every four women listening to us today, one out of every four have been a victim of sexual violence as that? a child, one as a child, so, most of them in their own homes. And now I understand, now we can understand it a little more as to why not to talk about it because yeah. probably if you're having a dinner party, you've got four or five people sitting There's there. There's people that and have the been women affected. that have been affected and they want to avoid the subject because yes. if it comes up, they've got to stop talking or start thinking and putting themselves into that place yes. where it's very secret. Yes. And, and, and those are the conversations we need to start having is how do we fix that? Not just how do we fix child trafficking in Latin America or another country. Oh. Like, you know, the movie sheds light on things that are really happening. I have been there. The reason I invested in the movie, I was you know. there. I was on that rescue mission. The, the, the character in the movie, Pablo, who, who pays for the rescue, that was me. That was you, you were Pablo. Life. Yeah. So actually this is Pablo. <laughs> Because you knew about it. Yes. You knew what it I was. was. I was there. I've led over 70 undercover rescue missions in 15 countries since that time. I've seen the darkest depravity of human nature with an 8, 9, 10, 11-year-old being sold 
for sex. I've seen it. And so, so I can't turn a blind eye to what I've seen in real life. But now what we can do is step back and say, okay, what do we, what what do do we, we need to do, do to fix this? You know, I said something to Jessica Brothers, who's been working with you mm -hmm. and everything else. And I said to her, I interviewed her, and I said to her, I said, why can't we have all the good men training or helping the bad men? And, and I didn't realize that there was 40% of women involved in this as well. I never realized that many women were involved. I did not know that. And then, so I said, well, okay, so then let's get all the good women helping. And these aren't the bad women. These are the women that have been affected been, been by affected. it. Exactly. They've been affected by it at a young age. So it's something they don't want to bring up. So they're not really part of it as, no. as, as part of it. In fact, that's so important that we separate ourselves. It, Something that happened as a child doesn't define you today. No. That was, especially with the men. So many men are like, oh, you know, I don't want to bring up what happened from my uncle when I was a child. You were, because it makes me less of a man. It doesn't no, it make doesn't. you less of a no. man. You're, no. You were eight. You were eight yeah, years old. You These know. horrible things happened from a horrible situation. A person that was dealing with their own trauma at the time. Yes. Release that and don't allow it to continue to, to affect to you. To affect you over the years. In yeah, fact. Absolutely. Um, so you would advise, Paul, for most of the men and women, or the young, when they were young, the children, to try to get it out or to try to understand sure. what it was and not be, because I think a majority of them are ashamed of it. For They're sure. ashamed to talk about it. They're ashamed to say what happened because they think for some unknown reason, they think it's their fault. Yeah, exactly. And it's and not they, your fault, kids, it's, but you, you gotta learn to say no. Well, and, and here's the thing, here's what happens. The average age of somebody who, speaks about what happens is in their uh, being sexually abused as a child the average age is 52 years old that's my age i i've got grandkids already right i've well, I've, yes. I've, I've, I've 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 built my career and these people are holding on to this trauma and many of them never ever discuss it in fact i believe that the numbers are even higher they say that somewhere around 40 percent of all women at some time in their life have been a victim of sexual yeah. sexual violence I believe it's higher because once we really get into trauma therapy with, with these people, the numbers of people who have been affected in this way, who have held it their entire life, never mm -hmm. said anything to anybody, hold on to that pain and it comes out in, in, in anxiety and depression, anger issues, Absolutely. physical. Absolutely, and also maybe getting back. Exactly. They, 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 it's back. trauma transfer where they end up. Uh, becoming contact offenders themselves. Now, God bless them. Two thirds of people who deal with that grow up to never pass that trauma on. They, they're protectors, but one out of every three become contact offenders. So we need to love them and help them release, release that, that before they ever because pass that on. Because it happened to them, so they think it can, ha it can happen to somebody. Yeah. Is that why there's so many women out there that are involved in this? Well, as, why there's so many women who have been affected is because they're hurt people hurt other people yes healed people heal, heal people. other people yes. and that's what we need to focus on is that healing side how do we help people get the healing that they need so that it's not coming out in anxiety depression ang anger issues or passing or it on to another child exactly because exactly. that's, the whole, that's the whole thing so the effect of this movie has been very probably dramatic for you because you probably didn't realize it was going to, this movie is humongous. Oh, it's, and it's going to keep and growing. It's going to, yeah, it's going to grow yes. and it's going to grow and it's going to grow. But the whole thing about the movie is to stop the trafficking. Exactly. So this is the whole gist of the whole story behind Paul and behind myself because I've been involved with children, is we are adults, whether you're the parents or grandparents or just people, or the adoptees, or whatever you are, is to help children because children don't know. Now children, you know, somebody approaches them, they have the sexual feelings, sexual feelings, the same, because they're, they're children, but they still have feelings. How do we avoid that? The, are you talking about the adults? The adults have feelings for sure, but then the children, when the adult passes to, to the children. Yeah, the children we've, we've got to help them work through those, that trauma for sure. So here's, here's what's important. What's important? If 
of all of the children that we've helped to rescue, if you get them out of that situation, mm -hmm. put them into a healthy home where and, and give them that trauma therapy that they need, yeah. it's amazing how quickly the children can, can recover and to heal when you know about what you're dealing with. Where the problems are is, is let's say that somebody in your own family or in your own home is abused by their uncle or their father or whatever else and it's very, or whatever. whatever and they never share it and they hold on to it and they build up these walls Angles. yep and and they never share it now they're in their 20s and their 30s and they've never shared it those are the ones that we really need to help heal. And it, it's more difficult, but we have tools to be able to do so. You can go to Liberating Humanity and we have a lot of different things that we're putting together. That you're putting together the, any body of this. And, exactly, and, that we can help them And this means that their that. names won't be exposed. Oh, they for won't, sure. Nothing will be. So I think a lot of people are afraid that if they go to these places that their name is going to be exposed and then even maybe their mothers don't know of what's going on. Though a mother normally knows everything that's going on, but well, sometimes they don't. And that's the reason people, the average age is 52 when they disclose it, is because at that time, the likelihood of the perpetrators who are likely 20 plus years older, older. than them are now passed on. And so after those people have already passed on, then they're like, okay, now I can really talk now about I can this. Because I didn't want to talk about it while my grandpa was still alive. Or but whatever. also, because when that you don't tell your mother because I'm going to do this to you. Don't exactly. tell your father I'm going to do this. Don't tell your it's uncle. That fear. You, that, so there's that fear that's probably embedded into them. And as a child, they're listening to this grown up or whomever exactly. this person is. Yeah. And so they follow, you know, and they're afraid that something's going to happen to their cat or their dog or something ludicrous for sure and that that for goes sure. on and 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 that brings up an important point when it comes to trafficking okay yes. so so many men and women think that pornography is a victimless crime right I'm, I'm in the private of my own office I'm not hurting anybody I'm just looking at pornography what they don't realize is that a very high percentage some people estimate upwards of 80 percent of girls that are online today in pornography are actually victims, are being trafficked, are being controlled through fear and manipulation to be in that video. As well as being filmed. Exactly. So so those so it's not just somebody deciding to to bear all to the world, it's somebody that's being trafficked, being controlled. In fact, in addition to that, people say, okay, if I'm looking online and I'm finding somebody that's a prostitute, she's she's uh, she's she's working as a as a prostitute either on the streets or yeah. online whatever she says she's independent and and so she's just raising money for so an adult dealing with an adult i i shouldn't judge that what you need to understand is that the majority of them that say they're independent really aren't they they have a pimp they have somebody who's controlling them who's saying listen if you ever tell anybody i know where your sister lives i know where your mother lives i will i will hurt your and family this, this truly truly goes on this truly yes, happens absolutely. and they're, they're totally totally and if you come even if you're 16 17 18 you know even at a, a higher age it, they're still afraid yes they're still afraid of of, course. of what's going to happen especially to their family or to their or as well as if they tell the mother or the father that now she's ashamed of herself exactly. because she allowed that to happen and, and she didn't control herself or he yeah. or whatever the it's all it's all fear and shame and greed and yeah, arrogance and this is what's this is what's really this. and do they go after the children like the less sort of you know the the, the children that know less or younger not younger necessary, but the, the children that don't know as much that's going on in the From world. From an education standpoint, education yes. Educational standpoint, uh, go to a poor, poorer area. Poor, that poor families, poor areas, those, are, those children are unfortunately more susceptible. I will say this too, in some areas of the world, the poverty is so great that parents will sell their own children. More than half the children that we rescued in one operation in, in Thailand were sold by their own families. And in that situation, oh. you can't take this rescue child and put him back into a family that's, that, that sold them. So you have to find a healthy family. So now you're going to find a healthy family to mm -hmm. take care of them and give them the, the, the proper thing. Yes. So what is your greatest thing that you feel that us laymen out there can help you with? What would the first thing or something that we can do to start getting, getting all of you out there encouraged to yeah. help? Or yes. to, to, to help the, 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 the women, the good women, 
to help the women that have been damaged. I'm not going to say because they've gone into, these are, these are women that have been damaged Correct. mentally and physically. First of all, what do we do? We need to let go of judgment. Okay. Okay. Here's something important. I've realized that if you're ever, ever judging another human being, whether it's for being a prostitute, whether it's for cutting you off on the freeway, whether it's whatever it is, if you're ever, ever judging another human being, there's a 100% chance yes. that you don't have all of the facts. There's a 100% chance well, that I, I don't absolutely, know that, you're that, right. guy, that guy cutting me off on the freeway, he, his, his, his daughter could be in the hospital. I don't know. He could be just an asshole. I don't know. Yeah. But, but I don't. I, I still agree can't. with you because I, try, I sometimes. A, a little but, I, old, but, I, but I can't judge him because I don't know. I ask God to apologize to me when I see a little old lady or man that driving. And, like, <laughs> and I'm like, and, I, and then I see them and I think, oh, you know, why did you do that? Don't do that. Don't, exactly. And it's judging. And so, so it's a right. judgment. And so, so as soon as we as humanity can start releasing that judgment, then those people who really are broken, who are hurt, can feel comfortable coming forward, not feeling like they're going to be judged by their mother for going onto this road of prostitution, not feeling like they're going to no. be judged by their friends for, for being trafficked, so not there's feeling like... There's a reason like behind everything yes. that everybody does. So, and we can't so, judge because we don't know the now, reason. Now, now, understand this. It's important to preserve innocence. When, 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 you, when I say don't judge, I'm not saying that this guy that's trafficking the children, I'm going to release judgment and let him continue. I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure he never hurts another child again. Yeah. But I, even in that situation, I can't judge. I can put him behind bars with compassion, but I don't know if he was raped as a child you himself. Don't know. No. So, so by releasing judgment, then, then we create an environment allowing those people in our lives who have been holding on to their pain, allowing them to come forward and say, you know what? Yes, these things happened to me. This is some things that, that, that this is my past and help them to heal, help them to step into this new version of themselves that is it, not holding on to past. all those angers. Let, let, let go. Exactly. So the greatest thing you're saying right now, the greatest thing Paul's saying is let go. If you can just let go, and I know maybe it's still going to be there, and it's always going to be there. But let go and start living your life and start, you know, it's like you might get aggressive to your husband because something happened to you as a child or the wife, it, mm -hmm. either way. And so you've got to kind of let go of it. and Because and everybody's an individual. Yeah. Everybody's different and everybody. So where is it more prominent with tra tra child, uh, child trafficking. trafficking? I heard it was in America. Well, here's the thing. The United States is the largest producer and consumer of child pornography in the world. And they're the largest consumers of, of pedophilia, of, of traveling to other countries, especially, and abusing children. And so, yes, we have a problem That's a here. shock, isn't it, to America? I, yeah. thought, I thought we were a bit better than that. I thought we were, too. Well, I mean, I'm not a, really I am dependent. American now, actually, so I can, I can say my, <laughs> my bit. But because uh, I heard that, and I, didn't know, I know you would know. Mm -hmm. The reason you got into a lot of this, did anything happen to you as a child? No, I was very, very fortunate as a child to have lived in a beautiful, safe environment home. Um, what I didn't realize is that there were people in our own neighborhood and in my own family who <coughs> were being abused in my extended family and, and later in, in the families that I married into that, that had dealt with very severe, very severe abuse. Wow. And so, yes, in later in life, I had to deal with a lot of the issues yes. of helping them that to was heal. very close to you yes very and, close and, and you were probably quite shocked and, oh for and sure. did this kind of get you kind of involved and sort of well, think, well what can i do and how can i well how can I, I, help? I had a company that i built in my early 20s that was the attacking anxiety and depression company we we had a, an audio program put on by uh, by lucinda bassett that we were selling that help people overcome anxiety and depression. And okay. I, I spoke with thousands of people over those years who were dealing with anxiety and depression to the point where they were debilitating. And I, I came to find out there's a huge percentage of them that were holding on to a lot of childhood trauma. Yeah. And I realized how big of a problem this was. And then fast forward that what changed my life was a phone call 10 years ago from our attorney general that wanted me to help to fund 
the rescue mission of these children in Colombia. This is where this movie came from. And he said yeah. not only to help fund it, but then I was invited to come and actually be there face to face and play this role of this wealthy buyer of these children. And there in Cartagena, Colombia, face to face with the most evil people on the planet, I was, I was like, this is real. This is real. This is really happening. Yeah, they, they brought this child, this 11-year-old virgin, stood her in front of me. I'm sitting on a chair. She's standing up, not, not much taller than I was sitting yeah. down. And she's shaking, and there's tear stains on her makeup face. And I took her little hands, and I said, to be in. it's okay. And, and it hit me right then. <gasps> this is... This is happening. This is, how, this is how you got involved by the act. He's nearly in tears. He's getting me in tears. But this is, I, it, when you actually see it, when I was in Peru, I actually interviewed a, a, a woman and her little daughter, seven years old, just been raped by her father, and he went to work. And it, it just happened. Wow. And, now I, and now I've got to interview this, this woman, and I'm, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I, I know I think we've got to close because I think we've got things happening. <laughs> so we've got to close out the interview. But it's been absolutely amazing. I would like you to, 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 if you can, give a message out there to the teenagers, that because the, teenagers are close to each other. If, some, if teenagers can help teenagers, because yeah. I think that's one of the, the closest things you can. Mums and dads, yes, always be close to everything to your mum and dad. But to the teenagers in all the schools, when you see something of a friend of yours or you see some anxiety or you see the child is being picked on, what can sure. you tell them? How well, it's interesting you ask that. In my, when I was a teenager, I ran for student body office and I lost. In fact, I lost all of the offices that I ran for. <laughs> but then I was, I was picked by our, our principal to lead something called the peer leadership team. And the peer leadership team, we actually went and were trained on peer counseling because of the fact that if a, if a teenager goes and, and shares situations like abuse at home or whatever with, a, with a, an adult, with yes. a teacher, yes. legally in the U.S., that teacher has to take that to the authorities. Legally, but if the, yes. If the child, if that teenager shares it with another peer, then, then they're able to help them work through that and in a loving way, give them the tools that they need yes. to overcome that. And so, so that the, it's so important that we come together and say, you know what, I'm gonna release judgment. I'm gonna love you for who you are. Yes. I'm gonna help you get through of this and, and understand that you are not defined by what happened to you or all this crap in your past. And so that's what's so important. You can come, come to Liberating Humanity. Follow me on liberating.humanity on all the social media. Liberating Humanity is where you can find well, you us. Can, yeah. And we have tools there that can help you yeah. heal. You can, you can get through your trauma so that we can truly save millions of children, yes. not just those 20 at a time I in think Latin America. We're talking about the world. We're talking about For the sure. world. We're talking about the women that can feel the pain of another woman, help her. You know, because sometimes you don't understand, you pick on her, don't pick on her, you don't know the background, like you've been saying. Uh, men as well, get onto these men that have got all these, you know, internet things going on, you know, cut it out, try to, because if we all, I mean, it's human beings attacking human beings, if you think about it. Anything that happens in this world, it's, it's the human beings that are doing it, because we're all human beings. I don't care what country you come from, I don't care what color you are, I don't care what language you speak, I don't care anything, we're all human beings. Turn us inside out, we're all the same. Well, you've got male and female, so I guess this thing is a little different. <laughs> but I, I think it's helping each other, and I think a lot of you teenagers, if you can help each other because you're in schools together, you have little secrets together, and maybe you know, you've got a friend that's all of a sudden clamming up and, and not talking. Try to get through to that sick. You know, try to help them. Try to be that close that you won't tell anybody or you won't do anything. In the meantime, you can help them. Yep. I think that's the best exactly. message. Beautiful. And again, your website, where they can get hold of you? You can go to Liberate Children. Dot org liberatechildren.org goes to the Child Liberation Foundation, or you can go to liberating with an ing liberating humanity, and get some more information as well. Absolutely amazing. Well, Paul Hutchinson has opened up this whole world. It's just because of the sound of freedom, and the sound of the freedom is actually, if I if I am correct, is this little girl. Um, the opening scene of the movie is this little girl. She's playing some bongos and she's playing the sound. Yeah. And I think through the movie. You hear it in a part of the movie, this, this sound of the bongos and the It playing. is. Well, and then in real life, what happened, and you see this in the movie, after the, 
the agents came in and arrested everybody and the Child Protective Services people came in with the children, they started laughing and singing to calm yes. the children down yes. and that sound of freedom, freedom was the most beautiful it? sound it, I ever that, heard. And that's what it is, it's the sound of freedom. So thank you everybody for watching this incredible interview. Um, Paul has been amazing. Not only has he been amazing, what he does is amazing. It's just, and I have a funny feeling he's never going to stop. I think, I think he's just going to get it bigger and bigger. And I believe you have another movie coming out. Yeah, we have we're, we have some TV series that are coming out on some of the other rescue missions. So a lot of, lot of beautiful things that we're doing coming, to spread this message. To spread this message, and any of you out there, do not be afraid um, to talk to anybody about this because it's something that only people in this entire world can stop. We can stop it. We created it. So let's stop it. Thank you again for watching Nina on Speaks and uh, it's been incredible. And we will be back with you soon. Take care.